I'm here today with SpeechTherapyPD.com. We are super excited because today we are covering the journey for the graduate clinician from the time they gain their master's degree to the time they start their first day of work. And we are discussing all that is happening in between. And we're hoping to really build confidence and to reduce stress for all of those SLPs to be in those future clinicians and give them important takeaways that they can begin to incorporate right away into their journey for securing their CF assignment. So with us here today, we have a very exciting guest that I would like to introduce. This is an SLP who happens to know just the right strategies for negotiating salary once you have received your job offer. And that's what we're talking about today, how to negotiate the contract. So whether or not the salary number is the main priority for you in your decision for accepting a job, we know there are many important factors to consider before saying yes. So let's welcome the person who is here to share so much wisdom with you. And this is SLP Elon Hutchinson, also known on Instagram as the Speech Toolbox. Welcome to the show, Elon. Hi, Stephanie. I sincerely appreciate it. That was a good little welcome, <laughs> you know, I <I'm> feel that. <laughs> Thank well, you are you. full of energy. I was so excited to be able to meet you through um, FaceTime while you were just at your national convention. So it was, and I got to hear that you were in Charleston, South Carolina. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, what you're doing, what you're a part of. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Ilana, as mentioned. Uh, born and raised in Nassau, Bahamas. Um, I was able to win a partial scholarship. Um, for undergrad, which I attended uh, Almara College in upstate New York. Um, then I was fortunate enough to get a graduate assistantship to attend Harvard University, where I did my master's degree. Um, ended up in the middle of nowhere, my <laughs> CF position, which I'm going to go deeper into that story. Um, and now I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, where I own a private practice along with uh, two other businesses. Um, one is currently a startup company. Uh, and our, my practice is really based on holistic approaches, alignment, um, gratitude. We do a lot of gratitude work, uh, really kind of deepening the idea of being in alignment with ourselves so we can be the best versions for our clients. So oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. But now for everybody who's listening, just so you know, when I talk to Elon, we are meeting up for coffee because she's in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm going to be there right. for my dad's 50th college reunion. I'm going to be flying in from LA and we're going to meet, right? And yes. I want to, I want to hear all about what you're doing and what you're involved in. You were doing some very exciting things. And I, I, I can already tell, I love your values and what you stand for at the core. So thank you so much for being here. And for everybody that's listening, are you ready? We are going to just dive right in on all the things that you need to know to negotiate your contract. So I will kick it right back to you, Elon, and let you take it away. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So first of all, um, I think that this is such a beautiful topic that I feel like needs to be discussed more. So I appreciate you guys for allowing me to be in this platform. I'm going to be talking about negotiation from two, two different sides. One being, you know, the benefits, the money, the all that good stuff, but also the negotiation when it comes to negotiating what is most aligned for you as a CF in regards to that position, right? So I want to first kind of start with my story. And hopefully you guys don't make the same mistake that I did. <laughs> so fresh out of grad school, I was offered the CF position and it was offering me a lot of money, right? And you know, when, you, when you're fresh out of school, the, I, I don't want to, that, that sounds kind of a little bit bad, but you are really focused on the money at first for most of us. Um, and what that did is that, and that made me, <laughs> end up in the middle of a, a small little country, a small little town, I'm sorry, called Laurel Fork, Virginia, in the middle of nowhere, making a lot of money, driving an hour to work and an hour back. Mm. Wow. So that's two hours a day <clears throat> that I was driving. Um, and I stick it out for the, for the year. Uh, my supervisor, she was amazing. It was just that like, I wasn't happy, right? And so that experience kind of introduced me to this concept that we're at now in regards to negotiating the salary and the pay and the benefits, but also making sure that you're negotiating with yourself what you're willing to give up 
for these things, right? So let's talk about um, the good part, the, the, the money, the benefits, and so forth. One of the biggest things that I would always tell anybody when it comes to negotiating your salary is, first of all, do your own research, right? So if you're moving to someplace like um, California, researching, okay, what's the typical uh, pay rate for individuals who are CFs in that state, right? And then also looking at it from a place of what are you able to bring to that position that's mm -hmm. going to maybe increase your salary, I'll give you a prime example. I just hired a CF, um, but she was an SLPA for six years before she got her master's, right? So she came with a substantial amount of, of you know, experience and background. So I offered her a little bit more, right? And then plus she's very organized, happy, all of that. So I think when you're negotiating your pay, you want to look at what is the average rate then and also and this, this is going to take being a little bit more real with ourselves, right? And saying, okay, well, do I still have so much more to learn? Am I great with my documentation? Do I need a lot of support? Really asking yourself that, right? You also want to look at the salary or the hourly rate versus the benefits, right? Okay. Sometimes I feel like we can just focus on what you're getting paid hourly or, sal or what your salary is, but then not really focusing on the benefits because those may outweigh or those may kind of carry a good bit of weight. So let's say hypothetically, you're being offered uh, $40 an hour, but you really wanted $46 an hour, okay? But on the flip side of that, they're giving you reimbursement for your licensure. They're giving you um, your ASHA, helping you with your ASHA dues. They're giving you health insurance. They may be giving you a documentation stipend, um, money towards your uh, CEUs, all of that. Really and truly, those benefits <laughs> may outweigh that slight decrease in what you would have been getting because I think sometimes we forget, I know at least when I was a CF, that you still got to get taxes taken out. <laughs> right? like, oh, man. Taken <laughs> and it's different state to state, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. So like, for example, Florida, you know, with the federal and the state taxes, it's a little bit different. But yeah, depending on where you are and depending on how much money you're making, you could be getting hit pretty hard with, with the taxes and so forth. Um, I think a, a, a third point I want to mention when it comes to negotiating, when it comes to the money and the salary is, if you want to be an hourly employee, or if you want to be a salary, or you may say you want to be, and that this can actually change, you may want to be a W-2 versus a 1099. And I'm going to break that down when it comes to the sal salary and hourly. Um, personally, I own a private practice where I pay my, I don't call them my staff, I call them my coworkers because we work together, um, but I pay them on an hourly basis. That way, they're also able to increase their income whenever they want to, really. The more clients they see, and we always, we have two adult daycares. So they're able to see as many clients as they want. And so far that we have makeup sessions, right? The other thing with, but the benefit with a salary is that that's a sure thing, right? It's, it's you know, for sure, I'm getting this amount of money every single week. Whereas with hourly, depending on what setting you are in, like a sniff, you may have it where it's high one week and it's low the next. So I think it's important to weigh those pros and those cons. And then of course, with the 1099, you have to do your on tax at the end of the year. So some people like that. Some people are okay with the W-2. Some people, I'm sorry, are okay with the 1099. And some people are like, you know what? Nope, I want you to go ahead, do my taxes for me. I just want to know what I'm taking home as mine. That's mm -hmm. something that, yeah, you can, you can really kind of, um, depends if you're a budgeter or not, right? Like yes. if somebody who's really good at budgeting their money yes. would be, might be okay with a 1099, but somebody who's like, oh, I'm just going to spend everything I get. Yes, that might not be for you. <laughs> yeah. And that Stephanie, you right on the market with that, that exactly. And I tell people all the time, it is not always about how much money you make. It's how you manage your money. Ah, can you say that again? <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> it's, it's not about how much money you make. It is about how you manage your money. You can make a million dollars a year, but spend a million dollars a year, right? 
Or you can be like someone like my mom who made $500 a week, but was able to flip that $500 a week into owning apartments and flipping that and flipping it. So it's important to know that you have to be managing your money and understanding what you have coming in and what you have going out. That's also a part of negotiation is knowing what is your overhead expenses? What are your bills? You know, if, if your bills are $1,000 a month and this job is only offering you $800 a month, that's a deficit of $200 right there. Right. That would not be, you know, the best position for you because you have to care about yourself first and foremost, right? Um, another thing- yeah, That makes me not like math. <laughs> when, yeah. If I'm in the negatives. I know. The deficit, I'm not gonna yes. wanna do that math. <laughs> And unfortunately, I think sometimes the, these kind of topics are not talked about in school as in depth as it needs to be taught and spoken ah. about because this, what you guys are offering and, and explaining and doing is very, very, very essential. Um, another thing too, with the hourly rate, I'm just putting this out there and it's something that I do. Um, you can negotiate your base pay. So for example, let's just say someone is saying to you that your productivity, you have to meet a um hourly a week of let's say 25 hours a week right and they're going to pay you 40 dollars but you can say okay but if i go over that 25 hours can i negotiate maybe a two dollar increase or three dollar oh, increase okay you know so it's like okay from one to 25 it's 40 dollars an hour <clears throat> 26 plus i want 45 dollars an hour and that's very, that. mm -hmm. and I have people that negotiate that with me. I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay well, I, let, let's do it. Because my productivity for my, for my um, coworkers is 25 hours a week. Um, another thing too, that you may want to negotiate, and people don't realize that you can negotiate this. You can negotiate or at least attempt to negotiate the productivity rate. Mm. Yes. So, so, so talk to us about that a little bit. I'm a school-based SLP and there might be some school-based SLPs listening. So talk to us a little bit about that. If, if yeah. we're not sure what that means. Yes. So um, with the school, um, with the school, you can actually be hired either through a contract company or directly through the school district. Right. So that's two different funnels that you have. Now, if you're contracted through a contract company, sometimes they come with a productivity cap, like, oh, 80% or this amount, or you need to be seeing this amount of clients a week. You can negotiate that in your terms. Oh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is this school or this company needs you way more, especially as SLPs, we're, we're, we're hot. <laughs> 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 in demand so it's like we have that ability to where we can negotiate okay well honestly you know and I, I think it's important to, to say this I have a three-year-old son and if I was working for someone I'd have to say to them well listen I have a I have a, a three-year-old son and I need you to know I may not always be able to meet this 90 percent productivity because if my son is out sick one day I have to stay home with him. Mm -hmm. That's being very realistic. <clears throat> and if that company or that job can't understand that and always make sure everything is in writing, you always want to make sure you got that paper trail, right? Yes. To protect yourself. But you can always negotiate. And also if you find a school that you want to work at, but they're not willing to negotiate those terms, try going through a contract company to get to that school. That's also a possibility um, as well.